Apollo 8, Houston, uh, what does the old moon look like from 60 miles, over? I couldn't have thought of a better time to orbit the moon at the end of the year 1968 than to go to the moon for the first time. We have left off. I don't think anybody at NASA or the crew at the time that we planned the flight, which was on the 21st of December, really thought that we would go into orbit around the moon on Christmas Eve. Sure, there was risk, but the reward of going to the moon for the very first time uh, in the, as an explorer uh, was uh, well worth any kind of a risk that we had. The picture of Earthrise that we see that has been so famous was taken with a telephoto lens. So in reality, the Earth with respect to the lunar horizon was smaller. I could put the whole Earth behind my thumb and, you know, everything that you've ever known. It was a very, very impressive sight and one I think that all three of us will always remember as one of the most uh, significant aspects of going around the moon for the first time because we then got really uh, an idea of where we were on Earth. God said, let there be light. Did you know that that was going to be the most watched television program in American history? Not really. Uh, when you're there, you don't know, uh, you know, how many people are interested in what you're doing and what you're not. And that was true also about 13. We took off uh, from Cape Canaveral, April 11th, 1970, at 1313 Central Standard Time. Right there, I should have known something was going to happen. This is my fourth flight into space, my second time to the moon, uh, the stars and the sights and, and the sounds and even the smells were so familiar to me that we settled down for a very tranquil, a very lethargic three-day flight to the moon. And I was coming back down through the tunnel back into the mother's ship when suddenly there was a hiss bang. Bus Thunderbolt, their guidance, or uh, ECOM? Negative flying. Believe the crew reported it. We got a main B Thunderbolt. Spacecraft rocked back and forth, noise all over, lights were coming on, jets were firing. I looked up at Fred Hayes to see if he knew what was going, causing all this commotion. And I could tell from his expression he had absolutely no idea. Now things in the spacecraft began to happen rapidly. A light came on. Something is wrong with your electrical system. Before I could digest that piece of information, two more red lights blinked on. Two out of three of your fuel cells have just died. And there's one whole spot of that spacecraft missing. Right by the high gate antenna, the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. We were in serious, serious trouble. Standing by for any reports. You're not going to get home. I said, I already know that. Do you have a solution? I need a solution. They said, well, we have one. When you pass the moon and it slows you down and starts to aim you back down towards the Earth, as you pass the Earth, we'll have you light that lunar module engine again and perhaps we could speed up your return home. I lit that landing engine. For the burn. We're burning 40%. I say that was a good burn. Moved us over to what we thought again, we were on that free return course. We have to hit the atmosphere coming back from the moon inside a two degree pie shaped wedge with respect to the atmosphere. That wedge cannot be any less than five and a half degrees, any greater than seven and a half degrees. We have to thread our way inside that wedge to make a safe landing. For any of you who think that you might want to go to the moon, you might want to take notes, was for me to somehow manhandle the two spacecraft around, didn't have an autopilot to help me, to try to get the Earth in the window of the lunar module. And I said, this is the way it's going to go. So at the proper time, Jack said, start. I hit the start button. The engine came on. 
I jockeyed the earth vertically, Fred jockeyed it horizontally. 14 seconds later, Jack said, stop. I hit the stop button. Apollo 13 should be uh, out of blackout at this time. Odyssey Houston, standing by, over. Okay, we read you, Jack. Apollo 13 is practically on the time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't have the pleasure to talk to you this morning if that was not true. I shouldn't be here to talk to you. Why am I here? I'm here because of a very dedicated crew. There are three types of people in this world. There are people that make things happen. There are people that watch things happen. And there are people that just wonder what happened. Back in 1970, in the control center, there were people that made things happen. And remember what uh, Gene Kranz said, failure is not an option.